Hello guys, the Hindu editorial for September 28th, Thursday. So today we, we might launch the 575 day timetable also for 2025 students. We have uh, all these years done only one year timetable, which will have your prelims test and mains test and self-study program. Same like that, this also will be a self-study program. So you can enroll to that. There will be a fees for the different packages like only prelims test or only uh, mains test or prelims plus mains test. Like that different 4-5 packages will be there, which we usually do for 2024 also. Same batch is there, same pricing also we might maintain. But uh, again, the timetable will be a little more stretched. Meaning the 2024 students might be studying it with a 365 day plan or a 200 day plan. Meaning what is because they have only that many days for one year preparation. But you people who are preparing for 2025, you might have two year time. So now if you calculate from today till uh, next May, that is 2024 prelims date, there is around 200 days plus extra 365 days you get because one more year is there for the 2025 May prelims. So 365 plus uh, 200, like the total around 575 days timetable I have made. So day by day, like it will be written, today I read history, today I watch my foundation, today uh, do international relation, whatever is written, that day do only that, only like 3 hours, 4 hours daily study, very minimal study I have kept. So you just have to follow, on certain days there will be our prelims test, there will be our mains test. So prelims test means it will be a PDF format, you will get the PDFs, you have to sit and read, it will be in question answer format, so you have to simply read. And this includes the current affairs also. Two, two or two and a half years of current affairs I have included, that is uh, total around 100 or 110 tests will be there prelims test, prelims test PDF in which uh, two and a half months of uh, sorry years of current affairs is there. In one year there is 12 months of current affairs so 12 PDF, two year means 24 PDF, another four or five extra months so 29 to 30 PDFs is current affairs and remaining 70 to 80 PDFs is static subjects. So that is the prelims, same like that mains, mains will have not only your PDFs, it will have evaluation also, I meaning you will write answers and submit to us, we will correct it also. So that full program, okay, with the timetable, with the fee structure, everything will be done in one part or two part video, I will uh, do it tonight, okay, today uh, I will be uh, shooting it, so then we will upload it. So you can come and enroll the details also through WhatsApp, you can come and enroll. So wait for that video and without watching that, do not ask questions because when you just put a poster, immediately questions comes. Sir, what is the fees? Sir, what is this thing? What can we be including that? Will you, like that? you don't ask like fire questions at us before seeing the content. Okay, wait for the launch video, watch it fully, then come and ask. Okay, and ask only those things which is not there in the video because some people seeing the video immediately come and ask, sir, what is the fees? Then why did we make that video? So watch the video. You will get the details tonight. Okay. So today, very interesting editorials are there. Uh, first thing, as I told, is uh, modern day slavery. Okay. Sometime back in WhatsApp, I told this. So modern day slavery is uh, your skills and labor related uh, uh, skill uh, jobs, uh, people, okay, working people's uh, problems. So that related a very detailed article, very lengthy article it is because in the G20, we failed to bring this topic or if we brought it also we brought it in something in a wrong way that it has backfired or it is not uh, uh, happened okay so that we will discuss in detail then we have the asteroids and lot of science missions you will study okay uh, nasa's uh, uh, mission uh, european space agency's mission and uh, japan's uh, mission all these missions to go and bring some sample from an asteroid so what is an asteroid what is a comet what is the previous year question which upsc asked everything in very much details i'll be doing so first i'll give you a little bit intro about this uh, uh, slavery in the modern day that is our jobs itself many people who do jobs actually they are working like slaves only they don't love their job okay maybe in the starting time they will tell i want to become an it engineer i want to become a uh, uh, this thing Any, anything you will tell but once you get into job you are just like first time it's first month itself you will take a loan or you will be running on emis and then you are stuck in the job you cannot leave the job and you are uh, tortured and there is like no proper rules and regulations there for indians within indians also and indians who are working outside also many many problems are there which they won't tell you they will show only the colorful side of their life okay in social media saturday sunday they go to a mcdonald's and eat a burger that is what is posted monday to friday what they are struggling nobody knows okay any job even if it's business events like we are teaching we all have our problems but we will never show our negative side to the world but there are a lot of challenges there are a lot of problems which they face so we'll try to discuss them okay in the worldwide i'll show you static part first as usual so victims of modern slavery okay which includes what all forced labor exploitation forced marriage forced sexual exploitation state imposed forced labor meaning in china and all there are many people who are like mandatorily you have to join the military Okay, from one family, one person should join the military or some people have to do only this one. Your children has to be sent for training for the Olympics and all. That's why they have that many medals also. From a very young age, at the age of five, six and all, when your body can be molded or flexible in any format, you are training them. Harsh, harsh training videos of small kids of uh, Chinese uh, ch uh, children. You can see in YouTube the videos. So like that, 
that is all forced kind of something you're forcing something someone to do something then in the name of job you are taken outside and then you are sexually exploited or you will be taken as you will believe the husband and go there but there it will be something else happening with you so many many all these comes under kind of slavery only so we will stick to our point to the job related slavery okay so here again some more data if you take hotspots of modern slavery the areas north korea eritrea burundi central african republic afghanistan mauritania south sudan pakistan in this if you don't know the exact locations of these places on the map your preparation is going very weak okay directly if you don't know eritrea where exactly it is there on the map whether it is this side of that continent or that side of that continent uh, or equator is below that or above that this and all if correctly if you don't pictureize your preparation is weak okay and there is a lot of time to correct it so when i am telling something it is for you are good so take it in that sense okay whenever i tell this is not complete or you are feeling poor or you are not up to the mark it's actually to correct you not to scold you or not to demotivate you so you should know the locations of these places this is how you study don't wait for tomorrow in news to happen in eritrea go and check where is eritrea go and check where is mauritania you should know correctly where it is okay now there is a foundation okay walk free foundation or walk free organization which is in uh, perth okay perth is a place in uh, western australia okay western australia so they uh, bring out reports on slavery and these things and all most of the time it will be biased where most of the time they will tell all the western countries are good and countries like india and africa everywhere it is poor like that they uh, write, write in their report so uh, in sustainable development goal you know sustainable development goals are there which is like uh, uh, 17 goals and 169 targets we have to achieve by 2030 uh, in that uh, the goal number 8.7 okay in the eighth goal the seventh target is talking about uh, this uh, modern day slavery and other international community whatever guidelines they should follow so that uh, we are not able to achieve and all this report keeps uh, highlighting okay the report name is actually a global uh, slavery index okay global savory index 2023 is by this walk free foundation so here they are telling in the like five years last five years 25% rise in modern slavery cases are there. Okay. Totally it ranks 160 countries. Okay. Like uh, out of every thousand people, how many people are into forced labor? That kind of count uh, they'll publish. So factors such as political instability, inequality, lack of basic needs, criminal justice mechanism, internal conflict, displacement defined a nation's vulnerability to all these things defines a nation's vulnerability to modern slavery. Meaning any of these factors are there, there is a chance that modern slavery will be there. So they use data from the ILO, International Labour Organization, uh, the Walk Free, the International Organization for Migration, IOM. All these in 2022's data they took for the 2023's report. So the country with the highest, I told you, North Korea, where it's 104.6. I mean, out of every 1,000, 104 people are in slavery. Okay. Then Eritrea, Mauritania, and the lowest, if you take, it's Switzerland, Norway, Germany. Okay. And then Asia is the place where the highest, Asia Pacific is the highest where modern slavery people are there. Uh, and India has a prevalence of eight. That is eight out of 1,000 people are in modern slavery as per the report, latest report. In G20 countries, G20, like half of the people are in modern slavery, half of the uh, population. And then India, China, Russia, Indonesia, Turkey, and the us this is within the g20 which are the countries which have high um, high uh, modern slavery kind of people okay so these are extra static thing i am teaching you okay so definition of modern slavery i told you already forced labor forced marriage uh, debt bondage commercial sexual exploitation human trafficking slavery like practice sale and exploitation of children anything all these comes under modern slavery okay so it has devastating consequence on the individuals on communities on societies it violates all the human rights it hampers the economic development and uh, pushes more and more inequality it fuels corruption so it's an overall threat to the global security so see from individual they took it to the global level in just two three lines this writing skills you have to develop and that you will develop obviously when you watch my editorial daily okay now india's last time when we did a survey of this thing bonded labor and all it was long back in the 90s only okay and we have evidence that in odisha west bengal and all there are victims of uh, debt bondage human trafficking and mass displacement okay indian laws if you take we have this bonded labor abolition act of 1976 which was amended in 1985 and then we have this uh, supreme court ruling that the non-payment of minimum wages is also a forced labor only I mean, you're not paying wages to the people in a minimum wages that is also a kind of forced labor so this much content you have seen static some more charts if you see as per that report that same report ranking uh, this is the top ranking where highest number of modern slavery is there so this countries i expect you that you go and look in the map today itself and exactly know the locations where it is okay one is the most uh, uh, modern slavery uh, population filled countries other is the least one okay so you should exactly know where these places are and from india's point of view how much far these things are okay so these are all homework for you now we will discuss in detail so we what we are looking at now is this article okay i have shown you the static part now the hindu we will discuss now but before that i will tell you the uh, headlines so labor uh, 
uh, thing we'll do l20 uh, along with g20 there was an l20 summit also which actually failed so that we'll discuss then here it is uh, this side we'll see first that is the woman equality okay woman equality uh, woman reservations is in discussion now but uh, this this article is done by tamil nadu politician uh, dmk sports person so he is just telling about his state's schemes okay there is this magalir urumai togai okay that is togai means actually money so uh, that money is given to the uh, people who are usually unpaid meaning the housewives we know in our india patriarchal society is there women are uh, expected to do all the household work okay now when we do this 33 percent reservation for women in parliament that's all fine okay giving more vacancies jobs that's all fine but still do you think men will start doing all the household work and then a woman will have free time it's not like that why are men able to go and do politics and do these things everything because they know that when they go back home there is a uh, wife or there's a mother or somebody who is already uh, doing the cooking doing the cleaning doing everything ready even their dress is washed ironed everything is ready that is why next day they are again able to go right so that a uh, thing to counter that tamil nadu people have a, have a have a scheme where they are going to give money uh, to this unpaid work also I mean housewives also will get a monthly monthly kind of income same like farmers and all we give monthly i think 6000 rupees or something we are giving as per different schemes uh, housewives will start getting cash uh, as credit to their work which they are doing because they are also doing a full time job okay household work is one of the most difficult jobs which anybody can do so that scheme they have and they are telling that it should go in pan india everywhere housewife should be respected men also should share their work meaning against that you know all the points that's why that article i am not going to discuss okay it's about that only patriarchy should end and uh, both should take up both the things inside work also outside work also that is the overall gist of that article and that is over here telangana politics news it is not required their elections are coming up here health metrics again some random random charts they have given not at all useful for exam here it is sanatan dharma which again for exam it is not important but in that article many many people are referred many many people are referred means which there in your spectrum textbook like arya samaj founded by dayanand saraswati his satyartha prakash 1875 hindi magazine and then he is against caste system untouchability idol worship this kind of points i got it i just extracted that points alone okay if you read it will look like a very philosophical article it will not be useful for exam so i extracted everything for you you can simply note it down okay then they are mentioning about ramakrishna mission okay ramakrishna is again uh, vivekananda's guru kind of thing you can tell vivekananda's chicago speech which happened in i think 1893 in uh, chicago he gave a speech starting with um, uh, my brothers and sisters of america that's how he started so that audio clip is there the original audio clip is there in youtube you can listen to it that is one of the most inspiring uh, speeches where he it was a parliament religion parliament of religions uh, conference kind of thing he represented india or hindutva and then he spoke a very brilliant speech so about that uh, swami vivekananda speech it is mentioned here then his disciple or his uh, successor okay swami vivekananda successor swami abhedananda is mentioned in this article then bharati which is an indirect disciple of vivekananda about him it's mentioned it is subramanyam bharati or something and then sister nivedita is like a daughter okay like a dharma putri of uh, uh, vivekananda about her it is mentioned then a poem of bharati okay that is my heart seats a poem in that they are telling something about again uh, uh, sacred land and hindutva all these things okay sanatan dharma and all these things so just gk facts i am giving you in case upsc want to trouble you they'll ask all these things and when you revise you have to revise these people in particular because it came in newspaper understanding then adi shankara is mentioned ramanuja is mentioned sinarana guru in kerala who is like uh, the representative of the uh, obc caste that is erava caste in kerala okay uh, for them he uh, raised issues and uh, he supported them and worked for them then mahatma gandhi uh, is the one who brought many women to the forefront in freedom struggle and many other gandhians renuka rai and hansa mehta campaigned for many hindu family laws then uh, s radha krishna our uh, president and uh, uh, teachers day is uh, after him so he told about like hinduism is not bound up with a creed or a book or a prophet or a founder but is persistent search for truth on the basis of a continuously renewed experience so this quote if you pay ask in case it's religion they won't ask but still in case some the way the pattern is going even religion is being asked so you can use this okay at least as a quote of his you can use in the main answers then uh, nandanar who is a, a, a nayanar that is a, a shiva uh, uh, follower uh, his different names are there so about him there is a mention in the article there is nothing detail given in today's hindu these names are mentioned okay then this uh, panchali medu panch is uh, near shabrimala in kerala there is a hill 
where again people go to see this uh, magara vilakku that is a holy flame will come in the sky on a particular day uh, like on your makar sankranti kind of day i think this thing will come and people it's a very holy event for uh, uh, keralaite people so that related that hill uh, panchali meadow this is mentioned so this many things are mentioned in the article else static we can like give you unlimited topics even like adi samaj and dayan saraswati i can make a 30 minute video that is a different thing but i am giving you points so that don't take anything lightly okay because i don't think any other channel which teaches you editorial will even talk about that article they would have simply told okay this is not useful it is hindutva skip but in that these many people are mentioned that means upsc will sometimes take it and ask the static part of them okay now so this many are over now we will see this one joshi mat you know in uttar pradesh uh, sorry uttarakhand there is a place okay uh, a very holy place of hindu again so there uh, this it's near your other uh, uh, places badrinath and kedarnath and all this joshi mat is there but recently a disaster news you would have seen where the land is sinking and uh, Uh, disaster is happening and many buildings are uh, f- flowing into the water and many problems are there so the usual disaster what you need to know that is what is written there okay like we should take prevention we should not uh, break break the rules we should know that this is himalayan areas are vulnerable that usual 10 points which you have in mind that only i also have in mind and that is what is written in the paper also there is nothing new there okay disaster whatever general points you write about that joshi mat as an example they have written there okay you have to be careful you should not uh, go against the nature else nature will come back at you in the form of floods landslides and uh, cloud burst and many things that much only is there in the article so that is also over so our labor rights we'll discuss and then this one very very detailed fashion we'll discuss with pictures Bennu is the name of an asteroid. Okay, so what is an asteroid? That also I will teach you. Different asteroid missions of different space agencies. Why we are discussing this? That also we will do the timeline and the this thing and all everything. And what is the threat and what we can do to counter that? Everything in detail we will discuss. Okay, so two major articles is our discussion. And as I told in Sanatan Dharma here, Adi Shankar and all is mentioned. And you should know as a prelims fact that in Madhya Pradesh, Omkareshwara Temple Zone and Omkareshwara is I think three times asked by UPSC prelims. Okay, multiple times they asked which of the following are sun temples. And one of the options was Omkareshwara, which is actually a Shiva. a temple so you should have eliminated that and you will get the answer that it was asked by upsc i think two or three times omkareshwara was in the options okay so now that place only a 108 foot statue of adi shankara adi shankara is a person born in kerala who had the advaita philosophy okay medieval history and uh, art and culture we taught you uh, advaita and uh, dvaita Uh, dui advaita like two three forms are there where you believe in soul or soul and the universe it very slight variation but four five people are associated with four four five dvaitas okay so advaita is by adi shankara born in kerala but across india india's uh, map you know in india's map in the four uh, points four places he made four uh, matha kind of thing okay so that is why he is very popular in hindu religion so his big 108 foot statue is coming in madhya pradesh so this can be like any form they can ask either about advaita about adi shankara about omkareshwara question can come okay so be aware of that now we'll uh, continue and before that if test series if anybody wants current affairs uh, if you are enrolling to our 2024 or 25 full one year package you don't need this because these uh, one year two year will be included in that okay but still there are five year combo and all because some exams they ask very old current affairs also and it will be useful for lifetime for any exam okay it's a soft copy pdf lifetime you can use it so that uh, you can uh, come and whatsapp us in this number and our channel is also there come and contact us again in the same number and i will uh, 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 give you the details okay and one more number is there of icis which uh, in another few days i'll let you know and daily video links will be posted from that number from now on okay for test series and all you still have to contact this number only for interacting with me but our official one number will be there from which daily you will get our video links and updates and other post and posters and all we will uh, let you know soon okay so note down this number and now we'll discuss the labor uh, related one so september 9 you know the g20 happened india uh, uh, hosted it very grandly and we had uh, got consensus on the delhi declaration also which is very difficult thing to achieve because last time bali's uh, uh, consensus indonesia consensus uh, japan and uh, sorry china and russia opposed so there was no consensus okay consensus doesn't mean majority consensus means all everybody should do support so <clears throat> this time it was very uh, successful you can see here modi made it happen he softened the language meaning in bali whatever they told very harsh language about russia and all about the war india lightened it india softly told like both has its own fault we should bring everybody to same table and we should do a peace agreement so we should do the positive side of it so that's why everybody supported including russia and china and again uh, african union was added so that support also we got in brics also we like few months back we added ethiopia and egypt to brics so overall everybody is supporting india but labor related or skill related okay uh, along with g20 over the last one year or two year you would have noticed there are many things happening like there will be c20 
there will be Y20. Okay, one is for youth, one is for uh, communication ministers, one is for telecom ministers, one is for maybe electronics ministers, like that. Multiple, like 20, 20, like the A20, B20, like that. Many 20, this thing you would have seen. And there was an L20 also. Okay, there was an L20 where the labor ministers of all the 20 countries will come and meet. Where ideally you will raise the issue of uh, labor's problem, the uh, wages, their working conditions or in Arabian countries some people take their passport and then they does not allow to quit the job. M many many problems are there. These things India couldn't raise and the main reason was it was a little bit politicized. Okay, usually all the time this L20 will be like there will be someone who is organizing or someone will be head of this and that usually will be the International Trade Union Confederation. There is an international body or a group of trade union ITUC. I will show you the static part now. Instead, this time, BJP's uh, aligned, party aligned, there is a body, Bharatiya Mazdoor Sangh. That was made the head of uh, this L20 summit. So, ITUC boycotted this thing. And when ITUC boycott, all the trade bodies will boycott. Okay, everybody did not take it seriously and L20 was a failure. This was not there in the news, but today's news it has come. So, we will discuss about this. One more interesting fact, next times G20 summit, the head is Brazil, okay, that hammer kind of thing, okay, that was a gavel, it was given by Modi to Brazil uh, president and Brazil will next time host the G20 uh, summit, okay. So, now, static part about that ITUC, earlier there was something called Federal, sorry, World Confederation of Labor, WCL and also there was this World Federation of Trade Union, WFTU, this and all is in the 1920s and all, if you see, 1920s and all, but later all these things merged together, okay. WCL merged with ITUC when because this was established in 2006. This ITUC was established in 2006 again in Belgium. That time these older bodies, everything which was bigger than this, everything came and merged. Now ITUC is the biggest body of all the trade unions representing 176 million workers in 161 countries, 235, sorry, 325 national affiliates. Okay, and the first meeting, first inaugural session in 2006 happened in Vienna in Austria. Okay, so their aim is this only protecting the workers interest, uh, labor laws and uh, trade union, human rights, socialism, uh, work, workplace ethics, all the all this whatever you think that all the things okay. And it is governed by a four yearly world congress, a general council and an executive bureau. And it is closely working with ILO and other UN agency. So this is the static part about ITUC and the other one also WCL, which I told you, which has different names earlier, 1920, 1968 and by 2006, they merged with the uh, new body of uh, ITUC. Okay. So now going back to the Hindu editorial, I told you in the past, it was headed by ITUC. This time it was ignored and the chair was given to that Bharat Mazdoor Sangh, which is a right wing political workers thing. Okay. So these things uh, hampered the complete event. In the absence of ITUC, the discussion which should ideally should happen on social security scheme, uh, data collection of scheme, skill gap uh, problem, all these things failed. Okay, Some meetings was happened, these things and all they mentioned it, but it was not very good, it was not very smooth, there was no much participants. So, Indian government should have taken the opportunity very seriously because we have lot of people working outside also. Okay, so they are modern day problem, the slavery, the kafla system. Okay, kafla system is in the Arab again. It's like a bonded labor kind of thing. Uh, uh, you cannot leave your job. Okay, once you are getting the job, your passport will be collected on the day one. Then till they tell you have to work, no matter the wages are getting delayed or your work site is being changed again now and then. Maybe um, uh, social security benefits are not there. Still, you have to work. So, Indian government missed the chance which could have made a real difference in the life of the workers. Okay. The insurance schemes were important, the job creation, decent working condition, equal pay, gender equality, elimination of forced labor and child labor, like this, these many topics are there to discuss and we missed everything. So now they are giving some stats, like Saudi Arabia came for the G20 summit. Saudi Arabia is one of the largest place where 2.5 million Indian workers are working and we wasted that chance. Oman and UAE who are not G20 members, they also were like invited for the G20. So they were also available where again 8 lakh uh, and 3.5 million Indian workers are working okay in the both the countries Oman and UAE still we missed that chance then India is the world's largest migrant sending country with an estimate of 13 million people sending working abroad in the Arab Gulf countries okay Bahrain Kuwait and other countries so there are a lot of exploitation is happening within India itself in the textile industry in the shrimp farming in the copper manufacturing stone cutting everywhere there is modern slavery then according to that walk free foundation which is an Australian body 
27 million people trapped in modern day slavery in G20 countries of which 11 million are in India. Okay, close to half are in India. Then this next line you can use in your answer because it's an ILO data. Okay, UN body, International Labour Organization. They are telling forced or compulsory labour is what? Okay, is all work or service which is exacted from any person under the threat of a penalty and for which the person has not offered himself or herself voluntarily. Meaning you are not willing to continue that job or you are not getting money as per you need. Still you are like work is extracted out of you. That is called forced compulsory labor as per ILO definition. This is an authorized definition. This is what you should use as an opening line when the question of modern slavery comes or forced labor comes. And India has signed a convention of ILO which is called C29. This also UPSC can ask. What is ILO's convention of C29? If you did not read this, you will not know. It is actually about the forced labor. Okay, meaning India has signed it. So forced labor, don't misunderstand that it is equal to exploitative working conditions and all. Because many areas and jobs are there where working condition can be stressful. There will be long working hours and these things and all. But they'll get salary on time. That is not forced labor. If you are made to work or forced to work and still wages also not given, you are not able to quit your job, then it is forced labor. Okay, so don't misunderstand there's a very slight difference between the both so various indicators are there which will amount which will lead to a situation of uh, forced labor restriction of freedom of movement withholding the wages physical or sexual abuse threat and intimidation or fraudulent debt okay meaning from the company itself you have taken loan for something so they will tell like without repaying the loan you cannot quit the job tomorrow you get a better offer also from which you can get money and repay the loan they won't allow they will tell work here only okay so that kind of fraudulent debt things can happen and then the author has done investigation on the shrimp industry the prawns industry and all of andhra pradesh okay andhra pradesh i think it's called the shrimp capital of india also so there again now they're telling some factors about what all is forced labor like workers who are paid less or unpaid for overtime under the threat of being fired if they ask for are the victims of forced labor. Workers who are forced to work until they have paid off a loan they took from the company are victims of forced labor. Companies that withhold workers identity documents like your passport and all or other card, ration card and deny them the access of document when required until the work is done are also forced labor. Then sexual, physical, mental abuse. That is also forced labor. So these many points or variety you got other than the ILO definition. Use this in your answers. Okay. So addressing forced labor and modern day slavery is important for India because the exploitation of workers would increase inequality, unstable social justice and threaten the democracy. Okay. Now in addition, we know that union government tried uh, the labor laws. We have hundreds of labor laws in our country. We tried to make a four labor code, which I already explained once. Wage code and labor code. Like that four, just four code they are trying to uh, make it. But a lot of protest came because of uh, trade unions, uh, this, this thing only. Same like farm laws came and farm law we couldn't implement. It was reversed. Same like that. This labor codes also, a lot of issues are going on. So government has tried something, but it is not uh, fulfilled or completed. Now in India, there are 530 million workers of which two, uh, 430 million are in the informal sector which are prone to different forms of exploitation or forced labor. So this is not only an Indian problem. Okay, we missed it. That is fine. All G20 countries face the same issue. Okay, G20, there are many countries who send their workers to outside countries. So if we do not address this situation, as I told, we will not be able to achieve the sustainable goal that 8.7 is the goal, modern slavery. We will not be able to achieve it by 2030. Okay, and we have the goal number one also. Goal number one is eradicate poverty. So if you don't... Um, uh, free these people out of this slavery, you will remain poor only. So that poverty also you cannot solve. Then Walk Free Foundation in 2021 report, they told G20 countries imported goods worth of 41 lakh crore. Okay, that much goods you imported from some countries where the workers were actually, meaning the people who actually made those products were actually under modern day slavery. I don't know how they got this data, but this is what they claim. 41 lakh crore of products which we imported, G20 countries, these products who made right, that workers are all in uh, problems. Okay, their sweat, their tears, their blood, like that they have in an emotional way they have told it. Also, the subjects which are not discussed, which hopefully in the next some summit India will bring up, investments in job creation, compliance with the promise of the fundamental principles and right of work, minimum living wages, equal pay, social protection, equality of income, gender, race, development assistance, right-based development, peace, common security. This is the conclusion. Okay, article is over. So this much things we did not discuss. L20 was a failure. Uh, author is not happy. So hopefully next time we will raise this issue because our lot of people are working outside and within India also there are a lot of problems. This is the end of the article number one. Now the article number two, asteroid Bennu. You see the size of this? 
It's a such a big rock in the space, which is bigger than our Empire State Building and Eiffel Tower uh, buildings. Okay. So about this, UPSC is very interested also. And UPSC asked question in 2011, what is the difference between asteroid and comet? Asteroids are small rocky planetoids, while comets are formed of frozen gases held together by rocky and metallic, uh, metallic material. That's actually true. Okay, when that is true, you can eliminate this. Second one, asteroids are found mostly between the orbits of Jupiter and Mars. Yes, it is found. While comets are found mostly between Venus and Mercury. That is wrong. Okay, comets are found beyond our Neptune and all. It, it can be found anywhere, but it is originating actually beyond Neptune. Okay, so that is wrong. So second statement is wrong means eliminate this, eliminate this. You got the answer without even reading the third statement. Third statement, comets show a perceptible glowing tail while asteroids do not okay you will see that shooting star kind of thing one thing is there there is a tail of fire okay that is the comet an asteroid is that big rock rocky kind of thing okay so basic theory also i've given here in this slide you can note it down so comets are not restricted to venus and mercury that's why statement uh, uh, two is not correct remaining things you can see what is the definitions okay this i'm not reading just pure uh, gk it is okay you can see this cooper belt and the oot cloud that is the area where it is found that in picture i'll show you see this the other slide you please read okay static part you read you know mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn uranus neptune and there used to be a pluto also okay which now is not qualified as a, a planet it is considered as a dwarf planet now okay childhood when i was in school i was studying i studied pluto as the ninth planet but later it evolved and uh, pluto is no longer a ninth planet it is a dwarf planet so we have only eight planets solar system okay in our solar system meaning revolving the sun there's only eight planets between jupiter and mars there is a belt where huge number of asteroids are there and these asteroids have a chance of hitting the earth also that i will teach you that's the next portion we'll go but asteroid belt is this one this Kuiper belt is beyond neptune okay and nasa has done missions still there also they have sent some vehicles there i will teach you and then beyond that there is this oot cloud so this is where the comets see this the shooting star kind of thing these comets are originating here and they will come towards earth okay so uh, as a homework you go and find out the difference between meteor Okay, I have taught this in my uh, geography class, free classes there in my lecture, uh, in my video, sorry, YouTube, meteoride, okay, where ending is DE and same thing, meteorite, ITE, okay, meteor, meteoride and meteorite, okay, there's only one letter is different, meteoride, meteorite, so three are different. Okay, you should exactly know what is it. And this is there in your NCRT geography, I think class 6th or 7th it is there, which free lecture is there in our channel. You should know this, okay. Uh, many difficult things are there other than this is just an asteroid and comet and meteors. You have to study about uh, 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 this uh, uh, Trojans, then you have to study exoplanet, you have to study nebula, constellation, galaxy. There are many things. This year's prelims, 2023 prelims, very difficult four or five terms came. Pulsars, what is pulsar? This and all you have to know. Okay, so basics at least study now. So, uh, this is the map. So, you should not forget where is asteroid belt, where is Kuiper belt, where is the Oot cloud and from where asteroids and comets are coming. Now, again static about asteroids in general. Asteroids are rocky subjects, objects that are orbiting the sun, meaning orbit, I mean, same like planet is going around, earth is going, this is also going, but in a different orbit. Okay, orbit is the path through which it go. So, they are also called minor planet because of the size, minor planet or planetoids. Okay. So, you basically ask anything, all are referring to asteroid. Three types are there, asteroids. One is main belt, which I showed you. Between Mars and Jupiter, what is found? That is the main asteroids. Okay. Which is, again, 1.9 million asteroids we are predicting. It is there. Second is the Trojan asteroid, which are asteroids that share an orbit with a larger planet. Meaning, Earth or Jupiter or Mars is going in a path, right? Already one route is there for them. In the same route, little behind them or little ahead of them, this is also going. But it will never hit each other because it is in a distance and uniform speed this is going. Understanding? That is a Trojan asteroid sharing the orbit of another planet. Third one is near Earth asteroid where the orbits are close by the Earth. Meaning Earth, there is Sun. Okay, I'll take a picture here. This is the Sun. This is the Earth. Earth is going around the Sun. Okay, so this will have a near something. Okay, or maybe a little bit crossing it also like this or something it will have. So, that kind of thing, which is passing very near to the Earth in a different orbit, that is called NEA or near Earth orbit. Okay. And sometimes, it, as I told, it crosses the Earth's orbit also. But it will not hit it because Earth is already passed. Then this will go. So, that is called 
earth crossers okay and then there are another one which is potentially hazardous asteroid which is actually have a potential of hitting the earth at one point of time now it may not hit but as per the time you calculate like first year second year maybe the 730th year there is a chance that both the asteroid and earth will pass that point in the same day so it there's a chance it will hit like this only one asteroid came and hit and uh, dinosaurs got extinct that is what is believed okay so like that maybe after 100 years or 200 years there may be some asteroid which will which are earth crossers which can come and hit the earth and full wipe full population will be wiped out understanding it can happen so for that nasa has done hundreds of mission and some of them are successful that is what we are going to study today so asteroids with a mean earth minimum orbit intersection distance there is a formula or a term for that they're telling minimum orbit intersection distance moid that if it is some 0 0.05 au that is astronomical unit if that is the value uh, or 22 or less or something then it is categorized as this pha meaning potentially hazardous asteroid meaning that things which can hit the earth there's some measurement for that that you can simply just glance it upsc won't ask this much detailing okay that much astronomical unit means then it is hazardous then some of the asteroids are double asteroids meaning we have one asteroid going around the sun that is fine sometimes there will be two binary asteroids meaning these two are like this asteroid is revolving around this also okay like our moon is going around the earth and earth is going around the sun same like that this asteroid can have a moon type another asteroid so this is going around this and this two together is going around the sun okay that is called the binary same like that uh, three also will be there okay triple asteroid system also can be there so these are all some examples are there i'll show you pictures <clears throat> so they can be these asteroids can be considered the building block of solar system why because why are we so enthusiastic about exploring asteroids and bringing back the sample of asteroid and all because our earth when originally it was formed it was in one shape one 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 composition it had this much gases this much minerals this much everything we humans came animals came and over the years it has changed and everything changed so the origin of the earth or origin of the solar system we cannot find out from earth but this asteroid is untouched since billions of years this was formed in the starting so that time onwards nobody has nobody has touched it so what is the minerals there what is the metals there how come human kind of one person like evolved what is the thing which gave us life that can be found maybe by exploring these untouched bodies that is why we are going and bringing samples from there so two three missions have been successful the biggest success has happened now this september by nasa that is why this is being discussed so this is the theory part of it of asteroid okay general asteroid now bennu which is the today's news asteroid bennu from which we have successfully bought around 250 grams of rock material we have bought it uh, nasa successfully did it so that is again 200 million miles from earth it is named after an egyptian sun god okay which in their thing i think some gray hair on some some name is there that is not important for you so this asteroid is not like discovered now nasa had a mission which is called this lincoln near earth asteroid research team or linear mission which they call in that only they discovered almost every asteroid nasa is the one who find out all the asteroids but collecting samples and coming everybody else are trying okay so 99 they found out 1999 and this asteroid is a b type asteroid b type asteroid means it has lot of carbon content lot of carbon content means it will be darker darker means it will be reflectivity will be less okay when you when light hits it the reflectivity will be less that effect is called albedo effect which we study in uh, geography and environment again so earth's reflectivity is 30% venus reflectivity is 65% highest one because it's a bright planet but this one is around 4% only because it's a dark one it cannot reflect it will absorb the light okay, understanding that is the basics that's why it's a b type uh, asteroid now around 20 to 40% of bennu's interior is considered vacuum or empty okay only the outer it's a rock and inside it's a hollow kind of thing this is what the scientists believe so roughly 4.5 billion old it is so that is why i'm telling if you collect some sample you can get information about the origin of the earth and this is classified as a near earth object because one day there is a chance that it might strike it is an earth crosser it can strike so between 2175 and 2199 it's predicted that it may collide okay by that time we won't be there but at least our future generation will be there before that either you have to divert that asteroid somehow or you have to destroy that asteroid for that there are missions i will show you the missions so uh, now uh, this one bennu is believed to be born in the main asteroid belt that is in the mars jupiter uh, belt right asteroid belt it is born and later because of gravity and other things and all it got pushed to our near to our earth that is what is believed okay now bennu as i told its ingredients and all if we get it we can understand billions of years how the rocks change how the chemicals change and uh, how earth life would have evolved we could have we could find out so we saw asteroid we saw asteroid bennu 
Now the mission's name. Mission's name is Osiris Rex. Osiris Rex is not a new mission. In uh, 2016, September, the mission went to the asteroid. It's like billions of kilometers away. So it went there. And its aim was collect at least 60 grams of sample uh, from that Bennu and come back to Earth by 2023. And they have successfully brought back not just 60 grams, 250 grams of rock sample they have brought back. Understand, there is a news now, yesterday, day before yesterday it came. Now the name Osiris Rex, it's not simply, okay, it's like a, having a full form, origin, spectral interpretation, resource identification, security, regolith, explorer. Yeah. So that, why is the name? What is the definition of each also I have given here? Origin means return and analyze a pristine carbon rich asteroid sample. Okay, the origin. Spectral interpretation means do that observation and do the interpretation of what is there. Resource identification, again map the mineralogy and the chemistry uh, there. Security is like there is this uh, sunlight effect. Okay, again sunlight, how it is falling and I told you the reflectivity, that is called uh, Yarkovsky effect in when a uh, sunlight falls on an asteroid and comes back. So that effect uh, studying, okay, that is the security feature. Then the regolith explorer, that is again document all the loose layer of uh, this outer material because inside is hollow. So outer material and then uh, sampling that everything, that is called the regolith. So that is how the Osiris Rex name is given. And now, before Osiris Rex also, there are other missions also. There is Japan's Hayabusa mission 1 and 2, both are successful. And there is Europe's Rosetta mission. Okay, what is the difference then? Difference is, they are going to different, different asteroids. NASA Osiris Rex is going to Bennu asteroid, which I showed you that big building size thing. Hayabusa is going to another even bigger one, which is another Ryugu and another one. I will show you the asteroid names now. And Europe went to a comet. Okay, not to the asteroid, go to a comet and then uh, collect data. Okay, so that again, if you see Rosetta mission, European Space Agency in 2004, okay, like NASA went now in 2016 only, they went in 2004 to explore this comet 67P. Okay, this was also asked, asked by UPSC. Comet 67P, this is the big name for that. Okay, always the planets and everything will have two names. One will be a technical name kind of thing with numbers and serial code and all. Other will be something related to their country, they will name something. Okay, so the first mission to orbit a comet's nucleus and land a probe on surface. So it's a successful mission and it went and uh, uh, fly alongside a comet which is heading towards the inner solar system. Comet is coming towards us. So that we went and explored to the Rosetta mission of European Space Agency. Hayabusa mission in 2003 and 2014, both are successful. 2003, they went to an asteroid called Itokawa in 2005. They reached there and they brought back samples in 2010. Okay, so it is successful. 2014, we went to another bigger asteroid, which is as a technical name is 1999 JU3. Japan gave a name called Ryugyu. Okay, so that place, 2018, you arrived. 2019, uh, you collected samples. 2020, you returned uh, uh, to the Earth. Okay, but they got only very few. Okay, maybe 10 gram or 5 gram like that. But now NASA has brought back 250 gram, I think, from that bigger planet. That is why it's a bigger news. Okay, so now uh, instruments used in high also static part. Two remote sensing spectrometers are there. Then there is this uh, mascot kind of uh, lander. It is mascot lander. Then there is Minerva lander. Total four landers are there. And then Hayabusa is having all the things to uh, uh, control the speed and check the surface. Everything they have, all the instruments they have. This is the basics about Rosetta mission, Comet mission, Hayabusa mission 1 and 2, which is to two different asteroids, which names are given. Now, asteroid Rugu also, simply theory part, like Bennu, I told you, in name, okay, Dragon Palace or magical underwater castle in japanese folk tale they have a ryugu character or place that they have named for the diamond uh, shaped rock which is called which is the asteroid ryugu so 1999 the linear mission see linear mission only discovered the uh, bennu asteroid also and the ryugos meaning nasa discovered everything but going and collecting samples is done by different different people so now uh, uh, asteroid is around 900 meter in diameter orbiting the sun between earth and mars okay that is the area in which it is orbiting and occasionally crosses earth's orbit so it is potentially hazardous again meaning it can hit earth one day and it has copper and zinc isotope ratios similar to like some meteorites and it is again primitive likely formed in the outer solar system where volatile elements are preserved i told you these are all outside the solar system untouched so everything will be preserved okay unlike our earth and sun and everything because in, when it comes to sun's vicinity evaporation can happen many things can happen you will lose the originality okay but these things are formed outside and then came here so you will have many things preserved and retained okay this is about the ryugu so now as i told these things will come and hit this thing will come and hit the earth so what you have to do either you have to send a mission to blast it but blasting also you should careful that it should not come and fall on the earth or you should deflect it so that it goes into different orbit and goes somewhere else. So that both NASA has been trying. One is the DART mission, double asteroid redirection test mission, meaning you are redirecting it. This is a, that binary I told you. 
dimorphous and didymorphous. Didymorphous is there around that dimorphous is going and these two together are going around the sun. So we have a mission, dart mission, okay, full form I told you, that will go and crash into diformis. Okay, so that will divert, it will go a little far away, it will not come to earth. This is one mission which they are trying since uh, some time, okay. Then same like that, there is a hammer mission, hypervelocity asteroid mitigation mission for emergency response vehicle. Okay, that they just to make it hammer, they fitted whatever they name like, okay, that's how they make full forms. So hammer, this one Bennu, okay. The other one was diformis. This one is Bennu, which I told in 2175, 2175 AD, it can hit the earth. We are doing this hammer. See, this much tiny it is, 9, nine meter, that small one. That is going to go and hit it, create some explosion or crack in that. It will like go, like mean break and go into different direction. So that is the another mission which NASA is trying. So you learnt a lot of missions today. I have not even reached the Hindu. Okay. September now, Hindu starts. September news, successfully delivering of the Bennu's thing happened. Okay, which name is 99RQ36. So there uh, it came after a seven year journey, 2016 to 2023. And it brought back 4.5 billion year old sample through that Osiris Rex mission. And then in USA, there's Uttar Desert. That is where it came and landed. Okay, when it will come to the Earth's uh, area. And then after that free fall Earth's gravity through a parachute kind of thing, it will come and drop into Earth. Okay, so in that desert, it came and fell. So there scientists got this. Now scientists will study this. And also scientists, NASA is not going to keep it with themselves. 75 percentage of the sample they will reserve it for their studies and future studies and all remaining they will distribute to the full world agencies every laboratory everybody do the testing everybody study because we need to know about the uh, evolved evolution of the earth okay so now uh, the components of that thing again there are five instruments inside that osiris rex which will explore the bennu including camera spectrometer altimeter and all and it has a robotic arm an arm which like it comes out and goes and takes the sample that arm is called touch and go sample acquisition mechanism or tag sam okay so these are all static again for you now in hindu today the same thing is told that we brought back it was a like a period of 436 days is the orbiting time of that asteroid and uh, it uh, comes to close to earth every six years Okay, it has a lot of carbon content, I told you, the Bennu asteroid. So many scientists believe that uh, when rocks have, as Bennu crashed into Earth, they delivered the compounds required for formation of life. Meaning long back, they're assuming something of Bennu content would have fallen on the Earth long back. That is why in Earth also life is there. So what is that thing which Bennu has? That is what we are going to study now. Okay, so Bennu could smash into Earth, I told you, 2175, 2178. And then uh, NASA's uh, mission uh, found out that Bennu is going at a speed of like 28 kilometer uh, per second. In May 2021, it began the return journey and now 2023 September it has reached. Okay. And then this mission is not over. Osiris Rex will again continue to look another asteroid. You can see here asteroid 99942 or FOFIS which in 2029 it will reach. That means that same thing will now go to that uh, asteroid and from there also it will collect data. Okay, so this uh, mission has worked alongside the Hayabusa mission, which uh, long back Itokova and Ryugu, they have things they have brought back. And uh, another important name you should know, which UPSC mains question came, New Frontiers Program. This is NASA's mission, New Frontiers Program, in which there are many submissions. So this is the third submission of the New Frontiers Program. The first one was New Horizon. New Horizon was NASA's mission to go till the Cooper Belt, to go and look the comets area. Then they had a Juno mission, which again UPC mains question came, 10 marker question. Uh, planet is uh, exerting the largest gravitational influence, that is the Jupiter. To go and study Jupiter, we had a Juno mission. So that is the second mission of New Frontier program. Okay, so New Frontier program, first mission is New Horizon for Cooper, Cooper Belt. Second mission is Juno for uh, the Jupiter. And third one is the Osiris Rex for the Bennu. Okay, now more will come. So New Frontier program is a very important one. Everything is asked in the mains paper. Okay, UPSC mains paper. So you should study all this and uh, hopefully we will humankind will come to know many more things about uh, our earth and the beginning of the earth and life and all so i'll wind up this too much details i think too much factual information too much current affairs and this much detailing i need not have done it i could have done it in a separate science class but i want my editorial to be number one in the country and i believe as of now also english medium hours is the best one no matter which institute you're watching you can compare that with vaisha yes i this much detailing of an article with the static backstory previous year question pictures nobody in the country is currently doing okay so if you also want this keep supporting us because it takes effort okay four five hours of my time is going in just one video uh, which ideally i could have done it as a paid class and even made money out of it but uh, i believe editorial is something which should be done for free okay so contact us in instagram whatsapp tell me your comments i would like to know that okay so thank you and have a nice day